And what a great day to sew something wonderful. I'm Kia with Kia B, and I'm so excited to be back here with you today. We have a really fun project to work on for you today. Um, we got this in a sew sampler box last month. It was in our unboxing videos. And um, we had lots of questions about a certain notion that was inside the box. So I reached out to Fat Quarter Shop. They said, absolutely, please film a how-to video. Feel free to do that and uh, let us know when you do so. So here we go. We have got, in our box, we got the Mai Tai quilt pattern. And this is, uh, it came with two charm packs and some pineapple foundation paper, uh, foundation piecing paper. And then we just had to get some backing, binding, and uh, background fabric. Now, Something I always like to keep in my studio is just a bolt of Bella Solid white fabric. I do like to use this in a lot of the backgrounds and so when um, we get subscription boxes that's how I'm able to finish some of them so quickly is I just keep in stock a um, an entire bolt of Bella White Solid. It typically goes with anything that is great for a background. So today's project is going to be so simple. I cannot tell you how much I am excited to use this pineapple quilt block foundation paper and to show you how to use it if you've never done foundation paper piecing. I've done one project previously with foundation paper piecing. It was when I very first kind of started our YouTube channel and I thought I need a really cute little sewing machine quilt for my backdrop. And so I found an adorable pattern, I think on Etsy or something somewhere. It's not available anymore. I've already tried to look for you guys. Um, and I had done that. Now, it's not the one that you guys have seen in the background before. I've, I've since retired it. It's on the other side of the studio now. Um, but I wanted to share with you how simple it is to use this paper. Now, the other notion that I really wanted to go in depth with how to use it was the add a quarter plus ruler. I had lots of comments in our unboxing what what is the difference between an add a quarter ruler and an add a quarter plus and I want to go into depth in this tutorial on how to use this. So why don't you come in a little closer we will talk about the materials specifically that you need for today's project and we'll jump into this really quick tutorial. Materials that you're going to need for today's project are very few actually. We need a charm pack. I'm going to be using Sun Prints 2019 by Allison Glass. This is something we received in a sew sampler box and the pattern is actually from a sew sampler box as well and it just turned out super super cute. So I'm going to use that so you just need one charm pack to make an entire quilt or if you just want some scrap fabric to work on just one block you will need an add a quarter plus and this is really what we're focusing on today how to use this particular ruler this notion you will need the pineapple quilt block foundation paper from fat quarter shop we will link all of these things down below so that you can find them quick and easy and this is all about foundation paper piecing you will need some background fabric. These are cut two inches by four inches. We're going to subcut our um, charm pack into two inches by five inches. So you'll have little one inch strips left over for another project. So I just took our charm pack and cut up a bunch of those. You will need some background fabric that are four inch squares and our normal rotary cutter, an ironing mat, a cutting mat, and your sewing machine and obviously hot iron. I like to keep my workspace for this particular project really close because you're constantly going back and forth. So let's clear all of this off to make sure that we have plenty of space. And let me tell you, I've made several of these blocks already and I'm obsessed. So we're gonna need just one piece of this for today's tutorial. Now you can go on and make 12 and make a really cute little wall hanging, or you can just make one and make a cute little mug rug. So we're gonna take one of those. And something I forgot to mention that will be handy is some type of um, adhesive. This doesn't actually show in your project, so I'm just using a craft stick that's repositionable glue. Uh, it rubs off the fabric super, super easy. It doesn't get on my iron or anything like that. So you'll need that. 
And our very first step is taking our four inch piece of fabric. And this paper is wonderful. It tells you on the fabric or on the paper itself, make sure that the placement of your first fabric square is turned on point. So we're gonna take this paper and we're gonna put it right side down. So we've just got blank paper facing up. Now this is a great time to use a light board or a nearby window. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to position that and put a little glue dot on the edges of my fabric. Here, here, here. Okay, and that just positions that piece of center fabric on my paper. That's the only time we will need to use that glue. So we'll flip this back over. So simple. Make sure that's good and adhered. On this, if you are using a light box or a window, you want a quarter of an inch of all the way around of space here, at least a quarter of an inch all the way around. Our add a quarter plus ruler is something we got in a sew sampler box, but we'll link it down below. You can actually purchase this separately. And I know one of the comments we got on that sew sampler unboxing was what makes this a plus? And I wasn't familiar with an add a quarter ruler. The, the thing that makes this a plus, and I really think this is a must have, this ruler, for foundation paper piecing. It actually has a very thin tapered edge here at the side, and this helps you in folding along the lines of your foundation paper that we have. Then as you keep going, you flip it over, and this is a ledge that butts up exactly where you folded your fabric. So our very first step is very simple. We're gonna take our tapered in that has the numbers and we're going to lay it on the lines between one and two. So I'm actually gonna do a little turn of my fabric so that it makes it easier for my workspace. I'm going to put that tapered edge and you see I kinda of am holding my ruler at an angle. That just allows me to get a really crisp, clean line. And I'm gonna fold that piece of paper back. Don't worry, you're not gonna ruin any of this paper. As long as it doesn't tear, it's really no problem. So I'm marking that and folding that over. And now I can do that. Now remember, we've glued our fabric. So pull that back. And using our add a quarter side, you're gonna flip over to where the notch is. And you're going to lay that down. And you'll feel it catch right there. It's absolutely fine. We're now going to use our rotary cutter and trim that away. That gives us the perfect quarter inch right there, okay? So now our next step is taking one of our two and a, um, sorry, two inch by five inch pieces with right sides together. You're going to line those up. Now let's say your printed piece is longer than your, so our printed piece is five inches long and this is only four inches long, that's okay. We're just gonna line up the edges and center it. Okay, so we've gotten that. We're gonna hold those and take them over to our sewing machine. Now at this point, you're really not sure where to sew. You could sew along this, but the idea between foundation paper piecing is tearing away and having more stability as you're sewing. So we're gonna open this up just under our foot drag this over and I'm only going to sew on the number two line. So let me hold that up here for you. I'm only going to sew on this line right here. I'm gonna go a quarter of an inch before and a quarter of an inch after and that's gonna be perfect for this spot. So let me line this all up again. Take this over to my sewing machine. Open this up and remember the, the right sides of your fabric are together. I'm gonna start about a quarter of an inch before and go beyond a quarter of an inch. Perfect. So now I've got my sew line between one and two. So now we just go in numerical order. Now we're gonna to go to three. So what I'll do here is we are going to press Let's go ahead and press this. That is our next step. Press this open. I do a little bit of finger pressing here, but you should have your iron hot and ready to go right towards the center. And you're pressing. Because these are on the bias, if you iron, it will distort your fabric. So just gonna keep going on that very quickly. 
And then you're going to go to the number three. Fold your fabric, fold it over, flip your ruler, cut away, and you're ready for your next colored piece. Now how do I tell the difference between a colored piece and a white background piece, or whatever background color you're using? If you look at these papers, let me show you one that's not cut out of the book yet. Now if you forget any of these instructions, it's okay, all of them are on the back of the book. But you'll see that some are shaded darker, like the number two, three, four, and five. Those are going to be our colored pieces or a printed pattern. The white pieces are going to be your background. So as you look at your number, number two, I know I need a printed piece. Now if I get to number six, I need a white piece. And you're just gonna keep going all the way around and leave that as a whole block. And this is what you're gonna come up with. So after you've gone all the way around, here's your block that you're going to end up with. Isn't this absolutely adorable? And all you do is with this add a quarter ruler. So I've gotten number three, I'm gonna grab another piece. It doesn't even matter. It can be so, so scrappy. Line that up. Take it over to the sewing machine. Sew on that line a quarter of an inch before and a quarter of an inch after. You do wanna make sure and use a very small stitch length. Now I'm moving on to the number four. I can use this, you do wanna, I always forget this, you do wanna press this open. So I'm gonna roll this back. You can finger press, but be careful because this is on the bias. Just like that. We've got all this excess, that's okay, because as you go around the numbers, you're gonna take that excess away. So here's number four. I'm gonna use the tapered edge of my ruler at an angle, get a nice clean fold. Now you'll notice because of your quarter inch before and after, you're gonna to have to rip a couple of, of stitches away from the paper. That is totally acceptable. This paper is designed to do that. Now you'll see I have overhang. Flip your ruler over to the catch side, so the quarter inch side, and I'm gonna start at one end and butt that up against that fold. And now I'm gonna be able to easily take my rotary cutter and trim away the excess. That leaves us now with a perfect seam. So you'll see number four is a dark piece, so that means we need a print. So I'm just going to grab a different print. This one's a really beautiful floral. And I'm going to line this up and center it. Take it over to my sewing machine and sew on the number four. A quarter of an inch below and a quarter of an inch behind. Cut that away and press that open. This paper is also meant to be ironed on top of, so you'll get that crinkling, but that's absolutely okay. So now we've done those pieces. We would move on to number five, use our tapered edge again, and keep going all the way around. And like I said, this is the beautiful block it makes, and the instructions are so very simple. I really would suggest this ruler. I, I had not done, a, I'd done one foundation paper piecing before. It was my first ever attempt, and it was a really tough one. But this ruler would have been so handy in that process, and so I was really glad to have this. It actually says in the instructions not to tear away any of your paper until you've gotten the entire front or quilt top made. And that way it gives it more stability with all of your bias edges and um, that way you've got less stretch. So let's take a look at what the entire quilt put together looks like. This is so adorable. As I had it on the design wall here in the studio, I just kept looking at it thinking how scrappy it looks and how fun and it looks like I put a ton of hard work into it. But really I just had to count from one to 25 and have my fabric organized and it was that simple. So I still have all of my papers attached. I have not ripped those off yet. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is have a, a couple of our kids I think will love to rip this paper off. And so you just simply tear it away really easily. The smaller stitch length you use in your tutorial, uh, in your piecing, the easier that will rip off. 
And like I said also in the tutorial, if you forget any of these instructions or you get, you get halfway through and you're a little hazy, the all of the instructions are listed in the front um, of the quilt blocks themselves of the paper. And so it will tell you what size you need to cut your strips of fabric to, your scraps, and um, really how to trim away and all of that. Now this does actually say tear the paper away from the block. If you're sewing it into a quilt or another project, remove the, the paper when the quilt top is complete for added stability. And that's exactly what I've done. So my next step is to rip all these papers off, have my kids help me do that, and then I get to quilt it and um, bind it and it's gonna be so adorable hanging up here in our studio. I love this foundation paper. I want Kimberly and the Fat Quarter team to make like all of the foundation paper piecing um, blocks because this was so very simple. And I've worked with Bias Edge before. I've done um, several, I mean several quilts that you really have to be careful with the pressing and everything. Using this foundation paper really keeps your fabric stable and it doesn't stretch and it just gives it such nice crisp clean lines. So we only use 12 out of this paper pack and there are 40 sheets available. So I can keep going and I can make other wall hangings or a small baby quilt with this very paper which I think is actually what I'm going to do next as a small baby quilt. And I absolutely love this. You could change out the white centers that this pattern called for with um, you can fussy cut something to go in the center block or I mean, the possibilities are endless and I really did love this. I told you all in the tutorial, I really think that this add a quarter plus ruler made all the difference in this part. And I think the difference in the add a quarter and add a quarter plus is that tapered edge. So this edge allows you to fold your paper on top of it, crease it super nicely, and then you've got the quarter inch um, divot on the other side so you can make sure you're getting an accurate quarter inch. So we just want to say thank you all so much for joining us in the hive today. Please don't hesitate to leave any comments down below if you have questions or if you get a little confused as you start to get um, your foundation paper pieced pineapple block going. So we hope that you'll have a great weekend and thank you so much for joining us.